Again, my name is Denise Compton. I'm a neuropsychologist at the uh, Thomas and Lyon Longevity Clinic at UAMS. And we are doing a series of mindfulness meditation sessions in which I'm going to introduce the fundamental attitudes um, as put forward by John Cabot Zinn, and then we'll do a meditation practice. So what we have up on the screen right now is kind of my nutshell um, definition of mindfulness meditation. So what we do when we meditate is we choose an anchor for our attention. So the anchor is something we choose to pay attention to. And one of the recommendations I'll make later on is, is the counting breath meditation exercise. So that's one example of the kind of thing we ch can pay attention to is counting our breath as we meditate. So we sit with the intention to pay attention to that chosen anchor. And when our minds wander away from that anchor, we just gently refocus our attention to what we've chosen. So that's really all there is to it. One way of thinking of it is a practice or an exercise that helps you maintain the focus of your attention in the way that you choose it. We avoid having the unrealistic expectation that we're going to be clearing our minds of all thoughts. This is not a realistic goal for most of us. It may be realistic for a monk in a cave somewhere who's been doing this for 30 years, but for us, not likely to happen. And if you expect that, you will be disappointed and you'll think you're failing and you'll stop right away. Um, what we, we just simply think that we are practicing, focusing our attention. And we're also increasing our awareness, basically our self-awareness, of what happens in our own minds kind of automatically or spontaneously. So when our minds wander, where do they go? What do they do? So this is often referred to as the autopilot. Our minds are on autopilot a lot of the time. And our minds are wandering around from one thing to another. Sometimes they're racing around from one thing to another, right? Um, so sometimes that's described as the monkey mind. Our minds are just chattering away all the time. Sometimes about very serious matters. We may be worrying about problems and concerns. We may just be planning our to-do list and all the things we need to do before the day is done. Sometimes we're ruminating about things that have happened in the past, maybe conversations that went badly or whatever. So our minds tend to often either revert to the past and kind of rehash things from the past or project into the future and either engage in some productive planning, but sometimes some kind of excessive worry about things that might happen in the future. And all of that can take us away from what's actually happening right here in the present moment, here and now. So another way of thinking about what we're doing with meditation is kind of training ourselves to really pay attention to this present moment, which is the only one we really have, right? The past is gone. The future is very uncertain. So let's see if we can live in the present, you know, a bit more. So that's, that's a way of thinking about what we're doing. So one of the fundamental attitudes that John Kabat-Zinn put forward that I'll talk about just a little today is called letting go. And here we're thinking mostly about letting go of some of those thought processes where our, our brains go, kick into worry mode or kind of monkey mind mode or um, kind of ruminating and seeing if we can just let those automatic thoughts go as we return our attention to our chosen focus or our anchor. So it's kind of the opposite of dwelling on things, ruminating on things. Um, we observe where our minds go automatically. 
We notice that with curiosity and interest, like, oh, okay, I see what happened there. But then instead of going down that line of thought or dwelling with that line of thought, we notice and gently refocus ourselves, letting go and refocusing. So there's a way in which this is sort of analogous to breathing. We use breathing exercises a lot. And the breath also becomes almost like a body metaphor for what we're doing cognitively or mentally. So if you think about the breath, there's an inhale, and then the exhale is a sort of letting go, right? Um, there is a rise, and then there's a falling away with every breath. Okay, so we can use the breath in that way to kind of help us think about what we're doing in terms of letting go of thoughts in the same way as we let go of the breath with the exhale. Um, another analogy that's kind of a nice one is to think about a, a hand that is in a fist, sometimes tight or tense, and then just to gently open that, open up the palms, and that's another kind of nice metaphor for letting go. Okay? So, as we do our exercise uh, today, um, kind of have that metaphor of letting go of thoughts as well as the breath um, kind of being your kind of attitude about what you're doing. So you you'll focus your attention when your mind wanders. Notice with interest and curiosity, then let those thoughts go as you return your attention to the anchor. So I'm going to put on the screen now our counting breath exercise. This is, I believe, a good uh, beginner's exercise for meditation. And so what you're going to be doing is simply counting your breaths. That will be your anchor or the force, focus of your attention if you choose to do this one. So one inhale, exhale counts as one. Inhale, exhale two, inhale, exhale three, and so on. So you count your breaths up to ten. And then you reverse and count backwards to one. And you're just going to keep counting forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards until the exercise ends. Okay? So this is very simple and straightforward. You will likely find it's not particularly easy, however. You will notice that your mind wants to wander all over the place. And when that happens, you just have to say to yourself, this is normal, this is fine, this is what minds do. And I'm just practicing, refocusing myself back to the counting of my breath. Okay, so don't be scolding yourself and saying you're doing it wrong. You're just doing what you do, okay, and practicing a new kind of skill. If you lose count, which you very likely will, that's also just fine. Just start over at one, and you might have to start over a few times, and that's all okay. So if you came today with another meditation practice that you already know and use, it's fine to use one that, that you would prefer over this one. Um, if you're new and want to try this, or if, if you've just never tried this particular one before and want to try it, what, whatever you choose is fine. So to, before we begin, we assume our meditation posture. So that's going to be sitting with both feet flat on the floor. Your spine is erect, so not tense, uh, but also not slumped over. And we say we are sitting with dignity. So assume a dignified posture. Your hands will be in your lap with the palm, palms facing upward, either resting on your thighs or cupped in front of you. It's also usually best to close your eyes. If you're not comfortable closing your eyes, and just find a boring place on the floor or on the wall that won't be distracting for you. So we're going to do about 15 minutes of meditation practice. And when the time is over, I'll ring these little bells to let you know that the exercise is over now, and it's time to return your attention to this room.
Okay? So, go ahead and assume your posture. Choose what your anchor will be, either the counting breath exercise or another that you choose. Go ahead and close your eyes and begin to focus your attention on that anchor. When your mind wanders, simply notice with interest and curiosity, without judgment, and then return your attention to your anchor.
just make sure everyone's awake. Nudge your neighbor if you see anybody snoozing. <laughs> All right. So, take just a few minutes to debrief at the end of the exercise to see if anybody has any questions, any comments. Um, I hope you'll feel free if you have something on your mind because it's usually helpful to others as well. Yes. People often go to sleep um, because it is pretty typical that you relax. It doesn't always occur, but it often occurs that we relax with these exercises. And if you're tired or sleepy, you well may fall asleep. Some people actually purposefully use meditation, you know, before bedtime to kind of calm down that busy mind um, and kind of relax themselves before going to bed. And certainly that's a useful tool that you might want to try. Um, as a general rule, it, in a setting like this, it is not our intention to go to sleep, um, but it does happen from time to time, and that's okay. It's not weird, it's not weird at all, though. No. <laughs> not at all. Yes. Okay, distractions with things going on in the room, noises and so on. Um, I just like to think of those as, as just more opportunities to practice. You know, we get distracted by many things. And when one of our primary aims here is just to practice focusing our attention the way we choose, uh, when something distracts us, we just notice. Um, and we try to notice without judgment. So without being irritated or thinking that's bad or, you know, whatever, it's just something that distracted me. And then it's another chance to just let that go and refocus as you've chosen. Yes. Is it no normal to sweat a lot? Well, one of the things that happens often is that as we relax, our our bodies feel warmer, particularly the periphery, you know, like hands and feet and maybe skin. Part of the reason that happens is that when we're tense and our muscles are constricted, we're kind of blocking a little bit of the blood flow to the periphery of our bodies. And as we relax and our muscles relax, we get a greater blood flow and so we get warmer. That's pretty normal too. Yes. Okay. Okay, let me repeat that. So you felt like you were continuing to count your breath, but at the same time you were kind of going over in your mind something that happened earlier in the day. And so sometimes that's referred to as double tracking. And it's our minds kind of go back and forth and back and forth from one to the other. So it sort of seems like we're doing both at the same time. And again, that's a very common occurrence, a very common occurrence. But when you notice it happening, as you apparently did, you just remind yourself, my focus is now on the counting. And see if you can let that other kind of rehearsal of previous events fade away. And you have to do it over and over and over. Yes. Yes. So if you lose track of your counting, if you get distracted by other thoughts and you lose track of the counting, just start over. That's fine. Or start anywhere you wish. It doesn't really matter. And just keep counting. Did you have another question or comment? Okay. Well, just a couple of other things I would say before we wrap up, and that is one of my beliefs about this practice is that it does generalize to our everyday lives. So we all have that example of we're having a conversation with somebody and we're so focused on thinking about what we're going to say next that we don't listen to the person who's right in front of us. 
sometimes, you know, to the point that that other person feels unheard or unattended to. And, and we really do want to be paying better attention to other people in our conversations with them. So that's just an example of how an exercise like this kind of helps us um, be more aware of when our minds have gone somewhere else instead of where we want it to be and to learn to refocus ourselves through this kind of continual practice. The other thing I wanted to just say is that was about a 15-minute meditation. If you want to do this at home, you know, you can choose a time frame that suits you, shorter or longer. Um, my belief about that is that even five minutes